Have you ever been working in the Unity editor and found yourself experiencing the nightmare scape of something like this? It's awful, isn't it? Wouldn't it be nice if you could turn a long list of enum or string options like this into a much more manageable menu? For instance, notice how when we try to add a component to a script in the inspector or change the shader on a material, we get this lovely search window. Wouldn't it be nice if we could turn all of our complex dropdowns like this into nice, manageable search windows? The only answer to this question, because you've clicked on the video, is yes. Yes, it would. Hi there, I'm Matt, and welcome to Game Dev Guide. In today's video, we're going to look at how we can take advantage of a lesser known API in Unity to build out our own customizable search windows for use in our editor tools and just generally improve the UX for anyone trying to use the custom editors in our project. Before we get started, though, I'd like to take a moment to promote the new and improved Game Dev Guide merch store, as well as a variety of the new items that you can purchase to help support the channel. I wanted this refresh to feel more practical and have more character, so I've put together a bunch of initial designs that I think you guys watching will love. If you want to get some new threads to start your year off right, there's a variety of prints available. These are Bella and Canvas tees, which are not only super comfortable, but give a great fit without compromising on their sizing. As a tall person, I often find it tricky to get a good shirt that fits, but these tees are long in the torso, which means that I don't have to compromise and can get a shirt that fits my torso and still looks good around my shoulders. They're the best shirts I've ever printed on and I'm just really pleased to have found them. Also, I know what you're thinking, and yes, the namespace tee comes in both light and dark mode. Now, if you're like me, you can never have too many hoodies. So naturally, I also had to include a hoodie version of this corner logo design. Again, it's super cozy and comfortable. I'm not really one to wear hats, but I just had to get this cap embroidered with the channel logo. It feels super stylish, and I'm sure some of you will be able to pull it off a lot better than I can. Now, I really wanted to offer more practical ways to support the channel than with just clothing, so I've also dropped a variety of different gear and accessories that developers such as yourselves might find useful, including notebooks, mouse pads, laptop covers, coffee mugs, and water bottles. You know, we're a responsible channel here, so face masks are also available. Anyway, please head on over to gamedevguide.store and take a look at some of the new items that are available. And as a special bonus, all orders over $35 will receive 15% off at checkout until the end of February. And uh, thanks in advance to anybody who makes a purchase. Your support means a lot. And be sure to tag me on socials so, you know, I can see the manifestation of your love in real life. That would be awesome. Um, yeah, thanks. Back to the episode. Okay, so I mentioned that the editor already has support for searchable windows earlier, but in typical Unity fashion, it's not documented at all. Now, the inspector isn't the only place you'll find these searchable windows. In fact, if you're using the new render pipelines in your project, you may have already come across them pretty regularly if you've been working in Shader Graph or VFX Graph. Well, at least they used to, they've moved to a new UI elements driven search provider now, but these tools both used to use search windows to provide a list of nodes you can add into the graph. I'm sure you'll agree they're super useful and extremely valuable in a tooling workflow. And so when I began looking at how to extend Unity's Graph View API for my own personal tools, it was here that I stumbled upon the search window class. You see, there actually is documentation for it, it's just that it's hidden inside the experimental namespace. Graph View, despite being an extremely powerful set of tools for, well, tooling, is marked mostly for internal use and not publicly supported. But in my own various use cases so far, it's more than powerful enough to be used in a production. And the search window class alone is so useful, I had to make a whole bloody video about it. I'll likely be covering the graph view and building custom graph tools in more detail in a future video. So if you're not already, be sure to subscribe to the channel to know when that goes live. For today though, we're going to cherry pick the search window class as there's a lot we can do with it outside of its intended usage. If we navigate over to my object here, you can see that I have an entry for a type of ingredient. This is just a big old list of strings in our editor script that we turn into a pop-up. Now, Unity handles this quite nicely when it's just a few strings. We can use the slash here to create little submenus within our dropdown. But even with a medium-sized array like this one, it can take a bit of time to navigate. And as this menu grows, it's only going to get more and more difficult to work with. Just to help illustrate my point, if I go in here and add a bunch of extra items to the list, you can see how Unity really doesn't handle this well when the list gets too big. It fills up the whole screen and is just generally difficult to navigate. 
So something like this with either lots of items or various subcategories is the perfect candidate for a search window. Let's look at how we can convert this in our editor to draw the string list as a search window. So the search window itself is actually just a generic wrapper class. When we call search window.open, all we actually have to do is pass in an object that informs our search window what to draw. Let's create a new class in our editor folder called string list search provider. Here, we'll make a scriptable object that also implements the I search window provider interface. If we generate the methods for our interface, you can see that there's really only two steps to creating a search provider. The first is to tell our window what to draw, and the second is to tell our window what to do when we select an item in the list. Building our search tree is actually quite simple. If you see, this method expects us to return a list of class called search tree entry which is basically just a series of GUI content classes. For now though, we'll create a new search tree group entry with the GUI content label list and an index of zero and add this to our search tree list and return the list. Let's also just return true in our other method here. In our custom editor, let's replace our dropdown with a button that will open a search window. We can use the pop-up editor style to simulate the traditional dropdown box instead of a default button. Opening the search window is pretty easy. We just need to tell it where to open and what provider to use. And like that, we now have a search window. As you may notice, nothing is in our list here, but our element we created earlier called list is actually shown at the top of the window instead. That's because the first element in this list with an index of zero defines the window's title, or more accurately, the title for the group. So with that, let's populate the list with our contents, shall we? Let's start by feeding our ingredients list into the constructor and then creating a property for it in our search provider class. Then in our search tree method, let's sort through our list items. You don't have to do this, but I like to go through here and order the list by item path and name as it makes it much easier to create the tree. With the list sorted, let's then create a list to keep track of our groups and then let's start iterating through our list. The first thing we want to do is break our item down into its different subcategories so we can path to it. We'll then step through the path and check if the subcategory already exists. If it doesn't, we'll create a new entry for it in our tree at the given depth index. Then we'll create a new search tree entry item for the last part of the path, as this last element in the array is the actual part of the path that defines the item name. The cool thing about this is that we can attach an object to the search tree entry. This could be a reference to something in your project or another class entirely. For this context though, we just want to provide the string itself. And now we have a fully populated search tree list. Currently nothing happens when you click the element though, so we need to head back into our provider and tell Unity what to do when the item is clicked. At the top of our class, let's create a callback called onSetIndexCallback which will also require as a parameter and assign upon construction of our class. Then in our select entry method, we just need to invoke the callback with the user data we set up earlier. In our custom editor, we'll just write a little lambda function here to assign our string to the property when clicked. And there you have it. We now have a functional searchable window we can use instead of those awkward dropdowns for any kind of string list in our project. All we need to do in the future for a list like this is call the search window method and pass in our new list. Unity's inbuilt asset browser only sorts items by name, and so for certain items and project hierarchies, it isn't the most useful way to find things when we're trying to assign an object to a property. For instance, I have a number of scriptable objects here, and when I open it in the asset browser, I lose all context of where it is in the project. I'd love to be able to maintain that path hierarchy and view my scriptable objects based on the folder they're in. So instead, let's create an attribute that we can use to tell Unity to find our item via a search window. Let's create a new script called search object attribute and we'll inherit from the property attribute class. Let's create a constructor and provide a type for our drawer to use. Then in our class, we can just add the attribute. Now we need to provide an attribute drawer to replace the field. Let's create another script called search object attribute drawer and create the property drawer. We'll provide a standard object field so the user can still drag and drop if they want or use the property picker. But beside the box, we'll add a little search button, which we can use to open a search provider. Now we just have to make our new provider. Let's create another script called object search provider. In here, we're going to want to create a constructor that passes our serialized property and the type of object we want to look for and assign it. So when creating our search window from our property drawer, 
we're going to want to get the type information from our attribute. Now there's no easy way to grab the attribute directly from a serialized property, we're going to need to do some reflection. If you're new to this, I've actually made a video covering attributes and reflection that I highly suggest you check out. I'll link to it to a card on screen or down below, as attributes and reflection allow for you to do some really powerful stuff dynamically, so anybody serious about editor tooling should really read up on it first. Let's quickly build out an extension method so that we can grab any kind of property attribute from a serialized property. Back in our drawer, we can use our new extension method to grab the attribute from the property and then the object type we assigned in the attribute. Now, let's use this information to populate our search tree. We can use the find assets method in the asset database and filter for our object type to get a list of GUIDs pointing to objects in our project. Next, we'll need to convert these into their paths. And then we just do the exact same thing we did before and sort through our list, creating groups based on their paths. This time though, let's add a bit of flair to our window. We can get the object from its path and then use editor GUI utility object content method to get its icon and display that alongside the label. Let's also assign this object to our user data. And then in our selected method, get that object from the user data and apply it to our serialized object. Now, if we head back to Unity, our object can be assigned by a gorgeous new search window. And that's about all for today. We now have a generic property attribute that we can use on multiple different fields in our code and get searchable lists for all different types of objects, including scriptable objects, materials, textures, and more. I'm sure you can imagine a plethora of use cases for a menu like this, whether it's searching for assets in your project, filtering through different localization options more easily, or simply providing a neater way to display large dropdown lists in the inspector. The Search Window class is an extremely versatile tool built into Unity that now you hopefully have a better understanding of and can use in your own projects. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments how you'll be using the search window in your projects. If you're new to the channel, please do consider subscribing to be notified when new videos of mine go live, or if you would like to see more from me first, consider checking out the suggested video on screen now. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.